for joining me today and thanks to Stephen and Amanda to you know, give me an opportunity to uh, give a talk on, on Tecton. Uh, I hope you guys are doing well and staying fine and fit on your cozy homes. Uh, so a brief introduction about me. My name is Vikas. I am originally from India and now living in Australia since 2014. I work for Telstra as a senior DevOps slash Kubernetes engineer and help customers to architect and deploy you know, the cloud infrastructure. Mm, I have been doing DevOps and stuff um, even before the, you know, the DevOps became a buzzword. Um, uh, that is pretty bit about me. So <clears throat> before I move forward, I, you, know, you might have noticed uh, that I have a heavy accent. Uh, so just in case you do not catch what I have said, or you know, feel free to just raise a hand or write something in a chat window. I would be happy to repeat uh, or rephrase a sentence. I'll try to keep an eye on the chat window during the demo. <clears throat> Now, um, just to save on a little bit bandwidth, I would, if you don't mind, I would like to turn off my webcam and you know reduce the distraction from my background. Uh, also, I'm working from home today, so you know you might hear my daughter's chatter in the background. So my apologies in advance for the same. Now I'll go uh, with the slides and turn off my webcam. Share my screen. Uh, is my screen sharing working fine? Certainly is. Okay, perfect, cool. So, yep, so Tecton, so Kubernetes Redis CI CD. So I'll go through this. So <clears throat> this is who am I, who am I? <clears throat> um, this is my LinkedIn GitHub URLs, so nothing but interesting over here. Now, before we begin, I want to, you know, bring up a few points here, like what is today's talk about? Like, <clears throat> so, Today I will be talking about Tecton, which is a Kubernetes native CI CD solution or a K native in other words. Now, what is K native? K native is a product is something in which adds components for deploying, running and managing serverless cloud native applications to, to Kubernetes. Now, Tecton is, uh, is quite native to Kubernetes. Uh, it just installs some Kubernetes custom resource definitions or CRDs, what, what is commonly called, and just work with those. For those who do not know about CRDs, um, I'll, I'll show you, you know, in the, in the demo, demo section. Just for now, just think of that as a, it's a basically, uh, you know, some custom API endpoints with Kubernetes exposes to you to hit on. Now, why I have put, to, put together this talk, I was looking for a completely open source, lightweight, hosted Kubernetes native CRD solution so that I don't have to worry about, you know, high availability and can theoretically run a lot of jobs in the form of pods and don't worry about the scalability of my solution. Now, Kubernetes natively helps me in these cases. So, you know, the Kubernetes auto scaling capabilities help you to achieve this. So this is why I, you know, try to uh, try to use uh, Tecton in my workflows. There are a few uh, uh, other solutions as well on Kubernetes with like GitLab, Jenkins, and GoCD. Now, each of these has some pros and cons. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not uh, here to discuss all of the, all of those. But even if you, if you, in case you feel the need, I'm happy to, you know, have a chat with you afterwards. Um, the other challenges, why, uh, what, you know, what I faced while trying out Tecton was, you know, there are not many uh, tutorials available over the internet, and some of them are either outdated or, or just didn't work. So I thought of, you know, I'll write, write up something. I'll create a, a repository for, you know, if anyone wants to try out Tecton, it's easy for for them to do. Um, and I definitely think that, you know, if in, I'll probably you know, share, save you a few hours of head scratching and Googling if in case you decide to play around with Tecton after this talk or you know, in the near future. Now, takeaways from this talk, um, all in demo. Uh, you, I would be deploying a lightweight Kubernetes deployment. Now, if in, even if you don't know Kubernetes, uh, you can still, you know, follow along or, <clears throat> uh, you know, do this afterwards and you will be able to, to do whatever I'm doing from scratch. Um, a basic traffic ingress route. So traffic is nothing but an ingress controller uh, in, in which I would be using. Some Tecton concepts, which is important uh, for this talk. And I would be creating, uh, you know, a couple of Tecton pipelines. So to just want to get you started with, with how to how to how to get the uh, get started with Tecton. So in terms of product overview, uh, these are a few key URLs which you will find <laughs> interesting. Um, so Tecton is, is again in a, a landscape of CNCF. So these are the few URLs, and the last URL is something you know which I have put the, across a small demo. And, and, and I would be using this this URL in, in the demo. 
uh later later in this in the course i would be later in the in this talk i would be showing you know what are different branches it has and how i am trying to use it so tecton again so it's a form sorry uh, it would be great if in case you can guys go and mute i can hear a lot of echo thank you so tecton is formerly a part of knative which was uh, initially called Creative Build Pipelines, and then it was donated to CNCF. So it's built by Google, uh, but it's contributed heavily by CloudBees, Red Hat, and IBM. It's Kubernetes native, as I, as I talked in, uh, you know, initially. It's flexible and supports many CI/CD patterns, um, including BlueGreen deployments, um, Canary deployments. Uh, it's written in GoLang. Uh, it has a, a pretty neat CLI and a pretty uh, you know, uh, okay dashboard. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of dashboard, but I'll, I'll show you in, in this demo. So Tecton Vision. So why was Tecton, you know, built? They wanted to, you know, the creator of Tecton wanted to produce something which is, you know, composable. What it means that you have small components uh, which together forms a pipeline, and it's declarative. So Kubernetes is declarative. You just declare something in the form of YAMLs and uh, you know use that. Cloud native again, uh, you know, cloud native actually means uh, different things to a variety of people. But um, you know, very layman language, I would say is that uh, it's basically a pillar of open source ecosystems. You know, and drive cloud native software. Uh, the system is designed to embrace rapid change, large scale, and, and resiliency. So, and all of these is provided by Kubernetes. So, so I think that they chose Kubernetes. It's just for Kubernetes, by the way. Um, reproducible. So, uh, it's it's just this particular software, you know, you can try it on anywhere. It doesn't. You don't need to have a particular infra uh, or production-like infra in order to try it out. Uh, as of now, I'm I'm trying it on my local laptop. You can try it on even on a Raspberry Pi. It works every, anywhere. So the, the the pipelines and the code you are writing is very reproducible. You can you can use it anywhere. So some of the key components, um, pipelines. As I said, with any CI CD solution, a pipeline is a basic component. Um, in this case, it consists of tasks and pipelines. I'll go through that in the next slides. Triggers, um, like any other CI CD solution, you have a trigger, like a GitHub trigger. You, you push something and you know for a CI, and it gets, for example, a Docker image, and it just gets uh, built automatically. Tecton has a CLI um, and a dashboard. I'll go through those in a bit of detail in the coming slides. So this is one of the you know important. <clears throat> Images we are going to cover today. So, uh, what's what's a pipeline? So, pipeline over here, as you can see, is is a combination of multiple tasks. So, one task and task, and uh, a task is con you know consists of one or more steps. Steps consist of one or more containers. So, one thing important over here is that everything runs uh, you know all one pipeline runs in a pod. So, as, as you know in Kubernetes, you know there are multiple there could be multiple containers in a pod. So in this case, everything, whatever runs, runs in, in a pod. Now, there are a few uh, advantages of this behavior is because you have now process isolation and storage isolation and all those things. So, you know, you're basically you're trying to use the beauty of Kubernetes uh, in terms of, you know, as a pipeline. Now, the pipeline can actually run in sequentially or, or run in parallel. Um, um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much. And yeah, and one more thing is that, you know, a task, gets executed this is important a task gets executed as as, as again as a pod so there's there is nothing which is running out of kubernetes over here it's just for kubernetes um a task can have some inputs and outputs uh, i'll show that again as well so inputs could be in this case just think of as a as a git repository and output could be what you will do with git repository i'm building an image so the output over here would be you know an image mm -hmm. um that's pretty much it is for this is some there's some additional concepts as well uh, a pipeline resource, <clears throat> it basically takes, you know, uh, it, 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 it takes uh, some inputs and outputs. And uh, the, again, this example is a Git repository or Docker image. Uh, pipeline run. So this is just an invocation of a pipeline. Think of think of pipeline as as a job, and think of pipeline run, run as a as you you are just overwriting some default variables and and trying to reuse that job in in a in a different manner. Um, <clears throat> <clears throat> so I'm sorry. So and a task one is just an invocation of a task. So this is how I mean this would make more sense when I once I'll go through this, uh, you know, in, in a demo part. Uh, I'll quickly come into the installation. Um, so the installation, uh, sorry, I think I'm okay. So installation just uh, there are few requirements. Uh, I am you obviously you need a 
and client to talk to Kubernetes. In this case, the Kubectl is, you know, as I think the only client. Uh, I am using K3D, which uh, is a product of Rancher, and uh, it uses something called K3S uh, in the background. It's just a wrapper around K3S to to deploy clusters uh, pretty quickly and pretty easily. And then a Tecton CLI. This, these are the only three requirements in order to you know to try out Tecton. And these are the only two or three things I would be using today. Mm -hmm. Now I think I'll have to I'll switch my uh, screen to VS Code. Uh, is my screen visible or is that is that text readable? Looks good. Okay, cool. So over here I am uh, just creating a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, this is the command to create a cluster through K3D. Now this would take a couple of minutes. Uh, I'll just export my kubectl context. Now, uh, an easy way to check out whether your cluster is ready to uh, uh, consume traffic is a command. It just you can make a call to localhost 8081. So as of now, it's giving error. It will take about two to three minutes uh, in order to get this done. Then I have, uh, apart, in the meantime, I'll show you what else I have. I have installed uh, Tecton CLI. In this case, it's, it's, it's called TKN. Uh, 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 and uh, obviously, I have Docker installed. And uh, and I have a kubectl installed installed locally. This is this is all I have. Now, uh, 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 okay, so it's not still, still not ready yet. Take a couple of minutes. Okay, in the in the meantime, I'll I'll, I'll walk you through the demo. Uh, the repository I have. Uh, there's a bit of echo there. Sorry. The repository I have called Tecton Kators Demo. Uh, it's on GitHub and looks like this. I'll make make the text bigger. Because so it has. Sorry. I'm, yep. I'm so I'm so sorry. Just before you get into that, um, could we just take like one 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 minute perhaps and just do a couple of very quick polls? And sure. if anybody's Go got got any questions, if you just want to pop them uh, into the questions box, please. Uh, just add them, add them at will, and then periodically, you know, Vakas will stop, and uh, we, we can have the opportunity of asking those questions to him. So, just in the meantime, um, what we have a polling facility here, and we really, really value um, your your feedback, you know, with us. So, I've just popped a little poll up on there. If everybody, what we'll do is we'll just wait until half, at least half of you have clicked on an answer and then we can move on to the next one. So you just want to thrash away. <clears throat> there we go. So we've got quite a lot of people from some pretty big companies. There's a reasonably good sort of spread in there. Awesome. Uh, thank you very much for that. We'll just pop another an, another quick one up there. Just by getting as much um, information as we can from the membership base, it, it helps us to be able to target the talks for Vikas to be able to target his talk a little bit better. Um, and also for us to be able to collect some information about what, what you may want the next time. So if everybody can just pop, pop their answer down there, that'll be fantastic. Thank you for that. And we've just got one one more, and then we'll get straight back. We're, we've got a we've got a couple of questions. Just what, once we've answered this one. So if you just want to pop down how you'd sort of describe your describe the the day job. We got quite a few engineers, perhaps not too surprising on that one. We've got some data science people in the audience. Awesomeness. A few consultants. If you just want to click away, we'll keep it up for a few more seconds longer. Fantastic. Thank you very much for that. Okay, so let's just have a quick look at the questions and then we'll get straight back to you, Vikas. Sure. Uh, okay, so the, the question that's come in is actually 
uh, related to an, another another topic. <laughs> uh, so I think I think we're all good. If anybody else has got any um, any questions, please please do fire them up in the questions box, and I'll pass straight back over to you, Vikas. Thanks. Cool. Yeah, I don't see any other questions coming. Um, Sean, uh, I'll probably take this offline with you. <clears throat> okay, so <clears throat> I'm sorry, my throat is acting up. So yeah, so this is a repository I have I have created for this demo uh, demonstration. So the, it has three branches. Master branch has my all the YAML files of uh, which is required <clears throat> in this demo, and then there are other branches called a Docker branch, which has nothing but a small Docker file, which in which I am just you know uh, adding. Terraform on top of Alpine image. Now, this is what this is this Docker file I would be using in the pipeline to create, to build an image and push it to Docker Hub. And then in a different branch called Terraform, I uh Hey Vikas, sorry, two things. One of which that's a 404, obviously. I'll, I'll let you find that. But if you can increase your font size just a tiny bit, sure. That'd be awesome. Perfect. Is it better, better now? Okay. It'll cool. help with the old people in the audience like me. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yep. In, and in the Terraform branch, I have just created a super simple Terraform file just to showcase, you know, what I mean, uh, uh, what uh, I would be doing with it. So in this demonstration, I would be just building an image with a Terraform and then using this uh, main.tf and applying Terraform to the built image. So again, this is a, for the CI part, I'm building an image and for a CD part, I'm just deploying something. In this case, it's a super simple main.tf uh, of Terraform. Uh, come on. Okay, now coming back to installation. So obviously I have installed uh, uh, my Kubernetes cluster. Hopefully it's running now. It is. Uh, don't worry about this 404, just because we haven't created a dashboard yet. Uh, uh, now I am I have uh, just populated my secrets, uh, which is my Docker Hub and GitHub secret. Obviously, you can't see that, but I would be uh, applying those secrets. So, and those secrets would be used again to pull an image uh, from my my uh, Git repository and push an image to the, to my Docker Hub. I just use a KA as an alias for kubectl apply. So don't don't worry about this. If in case you don't don't what case it's kubectl apply. That's all I'm all I'm doing. Hang on, what's going on? So the demo gods are demo gods are not with me today. Oh, I don't know why. That's because I haven't installed Git like on. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, sorry about that. So this is how I how you install Tekton. They already have a release file which have all the uh, cumulative resources. And I'll just <clears throat> and now if in case I do a tech Tekton version, it would actually show me the the version of the pipeline I have installed, which is point twelve zero. Now over here, I will just open my Kubernetes CLI. Now, so hi, can you guys go on mute, please? Sorry, there's a bit of echo. Cool, thank you. Now, Tekton, what Tekton does is basically it's super. Like, why I really like Tekton in terms of super simple stuff is it's just just two pods which are running. Um, now, one of the pod, pod is the pipeline controller pod, which is an important one. It basically watches out for pipeline events and just act accordingly. And the other one is for webhook, which is uh, it's, it's basically a Kubernetes admission webhook, uh, which validates and mutate your Tekton resources. I'm not going to touch on admission webhooks now because it's a topic on its own. For now, just just think of it as a way to handle pipeline triggers. So these are the these are two initially pods you need to you know you need to run in order to use Tekton. Now, I, I in the initially I talked about it uses some uh, it creates some CRDs for you. 
So these are the CIDs, if in case you want to have a look. So these are the CRDs or the Kubernetes custom resource definitions, which Tecton creates for you. Now, once we have this, we can also deploy a dashboard, which I would be doing now. And in order to view the dashboard, you need to have an ingress resource. Now, ingress resource is nothing but a way to expose your service outside the Kubernetes cluster. That's what I'm doing. So K3D actually uses traffic version one by default, which is an, an awesome ingress controller. So I'm just creating an ingress resource now. Again, this is all documented in my uh, in, in my in my repository. So yep. So now I have an ingress resource. I can actually go out to my browser and look at the UI. So this is my dashboard. I, I, at the moment, I don't have anything, and now I would be you know install creating some resources and creating some pipelines and running those. Now, uh, you might have noticed in my Git repository, I have just numbered these uh, in a particular fashion, like zero, one, two, three. Now, why I've done it, uh, just because, you know, when I when, when I was uh, trying my, you know, getting my head around Tecton, it was quite difficult for me. It was quite, it just took, out, took a while to get my head around all the resources and how they are used. So I have just numbered these resources so you can, can go through them one by one and understand what they're trying to do. Now, in this case, uh, I've already applied the dashboard and the secrets, and now I'm creating some resources. Uh, for my pipelines in resources are uh, here. So I have two resources. Uh, one of them has my Git repository on a particular branch called Docker and a provider is GitHub. And the other resource is in this case is my, my Terraform image, which is uh, on built off on, on top of Alpine image, which will give me push to my uh, Docker Hub account. This is it. Just these are the two still simple resources I have created. So I would be applying these now. Now, in order to use this resources, uh, what I need, I, next I need is a task. Now task over here is nothing which is, but it's just using Kaneko, which is a tool by Google to build images on Kubernetes. I'm just using using this this task in order to you know to build these images. It will just use these these variables or these resources as inputs and outputs uh, over here. Input would be a Git resource, and output is my my image which is built. Uh, that is essentially what it's doing. Now this is something I have. This this task is not really required. This step is in the task is not really required. I have just added just in order to you know make the troubleshooting easy. <clears throat> And my fourth uh, uh, is a pipeline. Now I'm creating a pipeline resource. I I have uh, so uh, so there's a concept in, in Kubernetes called service accounts. I'm not going to go into much detail, but you need a service account in you know in which with some certain privileges. In this in this case, my service account has privileges to use my my secrets. So I am creating some secrets now, and now I am actually creating a pipeline run. Now, if in case we go back to our dashboard, I'll make this bigger. And my pipeline run failed for some reason. I don't know why. Failed again. <laughs> okay. Where are the demo gods? Please help me out. Mm, I think I did some did everything. Wow. Okay, I don't know. Uh, I think I missed something. Sorry about that. <sighs> I always like to pay homage to people that are brave enough to do li live demos. You're doing yeah. well. <laughs> of course, it's never happened to me. I've never, ever had any problems, any demo I've ever done, ever. Yeah. <laughs> I have checked my multiple times. I'm just checking. OK, let's check now. OK, it's, it's running fine. I might have missed something earlier, but it's running fine. OK, finally. 
Just ignore my failures, please. <laughs> okay, so here's what I'm doing. So here, this this particular pipeline is actually uh, is is building a Docker image for me. Now you can view logs from here, or you can view logs from the CLI. Uh, it's called TKN uh, uh, pipeline logs. Did I miss something? Oh, I think. Hmm. Sorry guys, so many mistakes today. Finally. Yep, so you can actually view the logs through through CLI as well. So this is now my image has been built and it has been pushed to Docker Hub. Uh, if in case I log into my Docker Hub account, you would and if refresh this, I'll make the text bigger. See this, this image has been pushed by a few seconds. So my what what Tecton has just just uh, for me is that it has cloned my repository, gone into this Docker branch, built an image, and pushed it to Docker Hub. Now, this is this is this is the CI part. Now in the CD part, uh, what what you want to do is basically use the Docker image to do something with with Terraform, right? Now in my example, I've just put everything into one repository. Obviously, you don't want to do that in your production accounts. You would we would probably have multiple repositories with different branching strategy. Now, I would be creating another pipeline, a small one now, to, to use that, to, to use the Docker image which has been built, which is this. Clone this repository, go into this, this Terraform branch and run this main.tf. That's Terraform apply. That, 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 that's what I'm trying, uh, going to do now. Okay, A7. Uh, so this is the resource Terraform now, which is going to this Terraform branch. And again, a task and a pipeline. And in the last, the invoc invocation of a pipeline. So this is a task which in which I am doing nothing but Terraform init, validate and apply. That's all I'm doing. Initially, you would you would do this through, through, through manually, if in case you want to, uh, you are not tuning a CI/CD tool, and then a pipeline which just which just references to that task. You can have timeouts, you can have retries, which I which I like sometimes because you know in Terraform sometimes uh, a few things fail and you want to apply it again. So you can have multiple retries, you can have a timeout, uh, which is a bit handy, and in that at the end you have a pipeline. You know, just just calling that that pipeline with some some variables. In this case, uh, it's just this. I'm referencing to this repository. Okay, now hopefully I should be able to see this. Okay, so my pipeline Terraform apply has succeeded. You go over here, you see my apply has succeeded. There are there are a few other things, status, details. Now, whatever I've created through CLI, everything you you is also visible in the UI. You have your task, you have your uh, tasks runs, which is invocation of a task. You have your pipeline resources. These are the pipe, three pipeline resources. Uh, you have your pipelines over here. Now, few things about some you know uh, uh, troubleshooting is that you can also look uh, whatever you created uh, using the UI. So, for example, if in case I go over here and look at the UI, you can it will also show you in the in the UI part. I think which was. Uh, uh, uh. Not here. Uh, there was something. Okay, I'll come to this later. I think I missed miss. Anyway, I'll come to this later. Um, so 
so you so tecton can also uh, also has an api so you can also you know have an api and, and make a request for example this is an api i'm, I'm calling to which is nothing but a what a curl, curl uh, request i am making to in order to you know trigger a pipeline so you can also use an api call you can also use tecton cli to to <clears throat> to trigger a pipeline so in this case again i have triggered a pipeline that's why i have this pipeline run again running again now you can also use some historical data for example if in case i do a tech tecton logs uh, it would actually ask you which which logs you want to see so this is the one I, the first one is the one i have created through an api or uh, through postman or uh, the second one is i have created this manually so you can actually view the data here as well so you can have just, just some history in terms of pods like i talked in the initially that it runs everything in pods i want to show you something so this is so these are the job which have been completed and so these are the pods which have which are in completed state which means the pipeline has succeeded and these are the pods which are actually running so in this case i have five containers in the pods so steps so each step i said is run as a container so this is exactly what it's doing now Vikas, I'm just wondering if we can maybe uh, disturb you for a couple of questions. Would that be okay? Sure. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Awesome. Uh, so we've got a question from uh, Ahmed who's saying, what are the benefits of using Tecton um, over something considered a bit more traditional like Jenkins? So Jenkins is, first of all, not Kubernetes native. I wanted, I mean, obviously you can, you, there's, there's a thing called Jenkins X, uh, which can also be used. But again, I, I I don't want to do, you know compare a lot of tools together. So, but so Jenkins is other way of doing CI CI CD, and Tecton is another way of doing it. So I, I would consider as two different tools. I so they are obviously there are pros and cons of using each of these, but I don't want to go go too details on on those now. So probably just just, just connect connect with me later on, and I would be happy to help you out. Excellent. Uh, okay. Can can Tecton handle user input like manual appro approval gates? You, you you can, can script it out, but I am I am not aware if, if there is a manual way of, of doing it. I mean, but there is, since it can run some 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 scripts out, you can you can do can do it. It's it's, it's doable. Uh, how do we store share artifacts? So artifacts uh, in this case, uh, I would if in case you go into my examples, there is something called workspace. So each pipeline runs in a particular workspace uh, just go into one of the I'll, I'll quickly show you this thing so this is this is how you can share artifacts between between multiple spaces is Kaneko using docker to, yes Kaneko is using to to build to build and push docker bit both things it's building docker bit and pushing it as well so you, so Kaneko is one tool you can use something called img and there are there are a few other tools as well Kaneko is one of the popular ones it's backed by google awesome uh, yeah okay so I might just pass pass back over to you cool so the last couple of things i wanted to show is uh, so Tecton can also describe things in a pretty neat way, which I like. Uh, is was this? So I can do a Tecton describe on on a particular you know my task run, and it, it shows you you know what are your inputs are, what are your oops, sorry, what are your inputs are, what are your output, what the status of the, of the build. Your inputs in this case is my repo repository, and output is a Docker image. So again, this this helps a bit in order to skip skip things out. And uh, yeah, well, that is pretty much I wanted to cover in this in this very very quick demo. Uh, I might have hushed out things a little bit, but I'm happy to answer those. I think as we have time now. Awesome, thank thank you very much, Vikas. Um, if anybody's got any got any questions, you want to just pop them into the questions box. And we've got another couple of quick polls. So Mohit Sharma has asked that uh, it requires any special privileges or permissions. Mm, so in order to run Tecton, you need access to secrets as I showed above. So you have to 
have set your R back. So if in case you go to my fifth YAML, rback.yaml, it has it actually shows you you need to have a service account in order to run your you know your task. That is all you need. Not nothing anything special. Mm. I hope that answers your question. Let's see if we got another little question. So not like Docker daemon. So Kubernetes itself runs. Uh, I mean, using Docker as, as one of the CRIs. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what you mean by Docker daemon. Let me see. So, yeah. Actually, we're going to say we can get more hit, more hits. I should be offering you the microphone at this point if you maybe just want to articulate what your question is. Or if you prefer not to, just let us know. Your microphone. Your microphone should be working, Mohit. Yeah, am I audible to? Yes, both you are audible now. Yeah, hi, because so I, uh, my question was, uh, sorry, I was not able to put the question in the right manner. So uh, the, I just rephrase it. So uh, when we build a Docker, we, we it, Essentially, Docker daemon gets involved, which has to have root privileges. So, in this uh, case, okay. uh, while building the image, uh, does that Canico or Tecton they have to have a root privilege, or is it good not to have that? Uh, just like a Docker daemon, or is is the same? No, yeah, that's okay. So now I understand the question. It's a good, good, it's a good question. So, Canico does not requires any privileges to your Docker socket. I think you meant, meant, meant Docker socket. So yeah, Kenico doesn't use Docker socket. And uh, yeah, so you can build and push images by some API calls as well. Because your Docker is nothing but using some API calls to Docker Hub. So there's another product called, called IMG. That is also pretty good in, in this term. It doesn't require any privilege to Docker socket. Okay. Thanks. Thanks a lot. OK, we've got another, got another question. Uh, well, this is not a question. <laughs> okay, so it's not yes. Okay, so not a it's not a direct question. Anybody else got any other questions for Vikas? <clears throat> um, I've got one actually. So, um, are there any sort of uh, with regards to Tecton? Do you need to version align it with any of the other Kubernetes tools or tooling? So you, I think you said you'd like version zero point twelve or something. Like there's no correlation between the it's it's just a Go binary that that works independently of all the rest of the tooling, is it? Uh, yes, exactly. So it is it is pretty independent of the Kubernetes version. So you can use it on any version. I have tried it on right from one point sixteen to one point eighteen uh, with, without any issues. Okay, and if you were to you know, I mean, you can choose whether you're going to answer this next question or not. But what what absolute horrendous mistakes have you made with this? That you want to share with us so we can learn and not make the same mistakes <laughs> uh a few mistakes uh i think it's, it has a bit of a learning curve especially ar around these yaml like what is what is reference where and how how, how do you use it so that was the reason i had i had numbered these so it's more of a not a mistake but a bit of learning curve you know you need to have uh in order to play around with it or in order to use it and now, having said that, uh, yeah, one of the disclaimers that I in, in Telstra we do not use use Tecton. I used it in one of my previous customers' environment. Um, one thing was, you know, if everything, you know, I wanted to drive everything through Git. So, you know, obviously you, you don't want to make many mistakes in your in your making some uh, some silly mistakes in your Git repository while doing Terraform plan and apply. But again, that is that is not something which is related to Tecton. That is there's more on the on the GitOps. -y. Uh, GitOps flavor of working. Awesome. So we've got we've had a couple of people asking uh, if you'd be so kind uh, to allow us to be able to distribute this this video. Would yeah, sure. With Obviously, you, uh, I'm, yeah, I have no issues at all. Fantastic. How much are you charging? Fifty bucks a swipe or something? Or uh, <laughs> I, I'm cheap. Uh, a beer will do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like if you're a member of Meetup Madness, we can get you like a 10% discount on that. I hope that works, uh, Daryl. 
Yeah, yeah, no problem. What we'll do, um, I'll, I'll do my very best at some sort of topping and tailing it and sort of, you know, chopping off me waffling at the end of it like this. And I'll make it available to all the people uh, who registered for the event. In fact, who attended the event. I need to look after you ladies and gentlemen, first of all. Okay, you're very welcome, Daryl. Okay, so we've got another few more questions come in. Um, yeah, I'm just reading those. So Tam has asked that what is the recommendation about having workload plus Tecton running in the same cluster? So it's always good to segregate your, you know, your your working clusters with with your CI CD things. If in case you are using one big cluster, it's always good to. Uh, so you can use something with, with Kubernetes native, something called you know labels, and have your pods or deployments running on on certain certain nodes. So it's more of a Kubernetes thing uh, rather than a Tecton thing in order to do this. Any migration tools for migrating existing pipelines? Uh, not exactly. Since Tecton is more of a declarative style, um, it I, I don't I'm not aware of any 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 pipelines because Jenkins pipelines can be can be quite complex, uh, especially if, if in case you are using a Jenkins pipeline plugin. So I I would not say you know there there are no migration existing pipelines, and I think it would be pretty hard to do that even if there is a tool to do it. Any other questions for Vikas? I'm just going to pop out one one last one last little quiz here. Uh, see if I'm clever enough to be able to create this on the fly. I'm not sure if you can see that, Vikas. <laughs> I can see it. <laughs> There's at least 60% of people think you were awesome tonight and 43% think you were very awesome. So I think that's, I'm not sure how to do like a virtual round of applause, but this is the nearest thing we can get to it, I think. <laughs> thanks. thanks everyone. And sorry, my, my voice is uh, acting up today and you know, I might have missed, missed a few things. Sorry about that. <clears throat> no, no, fantastic. So really, really appreciate your time and effort. Um, maybe like if you could just share just, just, just for another minute, you know, because you've done you've done a few of these talks now. Um, how would how did you feel the first time that you did one of these talks? Were you a sort of nervous person, and how how has your journey sort of progressed from there? I'm just trying to get to a point where you can reassure the audience that it it may appear to be a little bit scary at first of all, but it's actually quite good fun once you get going. Um, not so actually, my my first. Tech talk was in Sydney in the DevOps meetup back in 2014. I did something with Nginx and console and or showcased that. So I so overall I'm not a I'm not a nervous person and I'm you I'm very I'm, I'm a bit of shy person. But but when it comes to tech I can talk a lot. So you know for, for me it was it was okay and you know something like light demos is all, always scary. So whatever I showed to show today has worked for me like six seven times. But but not today. So things like this sometimes gets on your nerve. But overall, you know, overall it's, it's a good journey. So yeah, I, I like it. I, I like display. I like sharing my stuff. I like sharing knowledge. Um, yeah. So it's, it's all good. Fantastic. It's um, it's a really good place, you know, uh, to put your hand up and maybe have a chat to us about sharing a story that you might have, you know, with regards to community stuff. We've got a few more questions coming in, so if you just want to keep keep them coming, uh, we'll give them to Vikas just in two secs. Uh, we will certainly look after you, you know, when it comes to helping you to prepare for doing one of these talks, and hopefully, you know, reducing, you know, any sort of unfounded fear factors that go on, you know, because really, at the end of the day, who cares? Like, if one of these things does, doesn't quite go according to plan, you know, so. Um, it's good fun, you know, as well. It's a real good part. It's good for your personal development as well and helps to increase your profile, which is always a useful thing, especially when there's like fewer and fewer jobs sort of kicking around. Okay. So again, if anybody is looking for any, uh, looking to have next sort of conversation around employment, please feel free to pop your details into chat. 
Have we answered all the questions now? I th think we're all good. So just, it just uh, there's two things that I just wanted to mention to you. One of which is um, we're going to be putting on a three-stage, a, th a three-part new style of event coming up uh, next month. So I just wanted to give you a quick sort of heads up. Um, we're calling it Fireside, uh, which is the Tech Leadership Forum. So the three different sessions that we've got lined up there are all based around five of the sort of emerging technologies. So all the f five of the key buttons that are buzzing around about the globe just now. You know, DevOps, data, and security are, are, are clearly going to be in there. <coughs> and we've also got um, IoT, and we've got blockchain in there as well uh, to kick off with. So what we're doing, we've got... Um, some very, very cool names, some real thought leaders that, that have uh, been kind enough to offer us their time um, in July to sit around the proverbial campfire and just answer some questions for you. So if anybody's looking or considering, uh, you know, moving job or whatever, uh, it's, it's a real good opportunity to get an introduction to what these individual subjects are all about and why they remain relevant, both from you know, your, your own employment perspective, but also from a, str a strategic perspective as well, as being driven by, you know, world economies just now. So the investment profiles that are happening in there. So we've got the likes of, uh, I can't probably mention her name yet because her employer, which is one of the big four banks, has still not assessed all the risks uh, with this, which is quite funny. Uh, but we've got the head of analytics for one of the big four that, that's going to be joining us. Uh, we've got the um, effervescent and super smart Sarah Young from Microsoft that's joining us as well. There is nothing about cloud security that, that this girl does not know or can passionately defend. So you're going to be in fantastic company there. Uh, who else have we got? We've got um, a chap by the name of Pete Cooper that's going to be joining us. Uh, for those of you who are not aware, the largest startups conference, I think in the Southern Hemisphere, certainly, is called StartCon. And it was Pete who founded that a long, long time ago, around the same time uh, that he founded or co-founded Fishburners, iCentral, and a whole bunch of other startup incubators. He, he really is personally responsible for helping to bootstrap the startup, um, the startup industry, so to speak, uh, from a very, very, very early stage. So we're really, really pleased that we've got him coming along as well. So we're going to be advertising this um, very, very soon. We, we are looking for um, sponsorship uh, for, for this. There's a few slots that are still available. So if you're interested in getting involved with that, please feel free. So that, that's the first of three events that I just mentioned. The second event is going to be all around being able to do the questions and answers with some, some specialist recruiters in those fields. So DevOps specialist, data specialist, security specialist, IoT specialist, blockchain specialist. The third is going to be very, very interesting. And I think Sean was asking some questions earlier. It's all about how to become a T-shaped engineer. So by that, we're meaning as, as a proficient DevOps gender agnostic dude, uh, how, how, do I, how do I take steps to become more relevant in the field of data science, for example? How can I, as a, as a DevOps dude, how, how can I get involved in blockchain? So why, why would you want to do this? Well, it's all about trying to influence the battle of relevance at the end of the day. You know, if you're just a DevOps person, <clears throat> trust me, there's an increasingly long line of people who are very proficient at DevOps these days. How big do you think the line is for people that are very proficient at DevOps and security, for example? So I'm not saying that everybody's going to be able to do this, but I'm going to be very, very interested to learn from people who are able to advise in this field. And give us some practical steps. Where do you go? What resources are there available uh, to try and help you, I suppose, not, not win, but at least, you know, be in with a fighting chance with the battle of relevance, as I say. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, if, as I say, there's some sponsorship ops, what else have we got? Anybody else posing any more questions? I don't think there is. Amanda, if you're still online, is there anything that I have obviously missed? 
Okay. Well, I think that's about it. But um, aside from the fireside event, yep. um, the next Kubernetes or Docker event that we have uh, for your information, for the attendees' information, um, is scheduled on June 16. So again, please visit webinar.meetupmadness.io. You'll be able to see there um, what our other upcoming events are. So, you know, just to let you know, we have one on June 16, um, and, and it's all about Argo. Um, and then we have a, an event with Secure Code Warrior, and that is on June 24. Um, and then we also have... On June 25, another Kubernetes docker, um, and this is entitled NSW Gov Digital Transformation with Kubernetes. And then a couple of um, events in July. The first one would be about data science. So I did see on the chat earlier that there are people who are interested about data science. So please, again, feel free to check out what our events are at webinar.meetupmadness.io. And that's got Eugene Dubazarski that's going to be talking in that data science. This is Mr. Data, basically, yep. for the country. Uh, and I noticed there was a lot of people uh, who are working with companies that got more than a 1,000 seats. You probably want to be at that New South Wales Government Digital Transformation with Kubernetes talk. Uh, which is coming up on the 25th of June. You, you can get your tickets registered up front, as Amanda says, on webinar.meetupmadness.io. We, if we don't run out of tickets beforehand, we will be advertising on meetup.com on the Kubernetes group. Uh, so oh, if you're lucky enough, you're going to be able to see some adverts there as well. Uh, you can certainly get, get uh, on there and get your tickets early, though. Amanda, anything else before I rudely interrupt again? <laughs> no, uh, that should be it. Awesome. Thank you very much again to Vikas for um, offering his time. If you're interested in sharing a story, please do get in touch. Ping me on, uh, ping me an email, ping me on. You, you know where I am. I can't hide. Okay, LinkedIn, mm -hmm. ping me here or whatever. Mm -hmm. We'll have a chat and we'll see if we can help. Um, in the meantime, th thank you very much to everybody who helped pull this event together. The guys at Zoho, your platform rocks. Um, Amanda for being extra super awesome and doing so much work uh, in behind the scenes here. I really, really appreciate that. And of course, to Vikas, thank you very much. And thank you very much to everybody else for attending. We'll see you again on the 16th of June. Thank you very much. That's right. We're, we're, um, I'll keep the session open for another five more minutes or so. So if you want to chat away in the chat area, you can feel free, ask me any questions, Ask Amanda some very, very technical Kubernetes questions. She'll love that. <laughs> and ask Vikas some, I don't know, something to do with her. Oh, and by the way, for those of you who stayed, um, we have good news. You've gone quiet. Sorry, Amanda. Yeah, Amanda, I think you broke, broke there. <clears throat> Pro probably her power has just, just gone again. <laughs> The girl will work through anything, but if somebody does finally cut the power on her laptop, she didn't know how long her laptop was going to last uh, because the, the main power has been cut. So I think we now know with some confidence how long the battery lasts. <laughs> <laughs> exactly one hour. All right. Um, we'll keep the chat session open for another five minutes or so until about 10 past. Uh, so if you've got any questions, just fire away. And Vikas, thank you very much. You're a champion uh, once again. No worries, Stephen. Thanks for having me.